What's going on guys, this is Astrum Sensei, welcome back to creating an action role-playing game using Unreal Engine 4. This is part 20 and in today's video we're actually gonna be making the enemy uh, attack the player after they reach them, you know we added the chasing parts a few videos ago. Before we get started, make sure you hit the like button and you subscribe if you're new to my channel. If this is your first time viewing one of my videos, I really advise you check out my previous videos in this series because I started making this game from the start so I really advise you to look at them and check them out. I also wanted to special thank my precious patrons for the enormous support that they're giving me. I really appreciated you guys. So yeah, let's get started. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly go to the blueprint player, the player blueprint, and I'm gonna pull the camera back a little bit because um, I actually changed the target's arm length for the camera boom a little bit. So I'm just gonna make it a bit farther so that it doesn't get in the way when we're trying out. Uh, the enemy attacks so yeah this is what it looks like right now and the enemy just comes to us and doesn't do anything really until we're out of their sight but uh, later we're gonna add hearing so they don't unnotice us unless we're you know crouching behind them and that is impossible so we're gonna start off by going to our behavior tree which we've been working on for several videos. Now this is probably going to be the uh, last behavior tree video for a while because I really want to focus on other stuff such as actual combat and player health and enemy health and you know hit detection. So yeah, we're going to leave the behavior tree a little bit after this video. So first off we have the sequence about um, the enemy patrolling. Uh, we studied it in the previous few videos, so I'm not gonna explain it, but this is what this part is. The patrolling, it has nothing to do with combat, so we're just gonna ignore it. There's this part, which is the enemy chasing the player, and it's, it says follow the player. And uh, enemy speed, so when they're here, they're walking, and when they're here, they're running. And, um... Yeah, right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make them attack the player. So doing that will require us to create a new task after the enemy chases the player. So I'm gonna click on new task and click on BT task blueprint base. And I'm quickly gonna rename it so that we don't lose it. I'm gonna call it attack player task no there's no need to write task just like the others so back to the behavior tree oh no we're gonna go back to our task and add an event execute ai so i'm just gonna type execute event receive execute ai and what we're gonna do here is uh, actually let's end the finish let's type the finish execute so this is a bit different from what we did in the previous few videos so now to make the enemy attack the player what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply go back to our actual enemy blueprint and use the same light attack blueprints that we've made for the player uh, since we copied them for the enemy um, we can simply just use them as they are. Uh, we're also gonna add other stuff later to them like charged attacks and many other stuff but I'm gonna keep my priorities in place so that we can have a playable prototype as soon as possible. So um, I'm simply gonna write, I'm gonna select everything after the input action and select them all and right click on them and collapse them, collapse the nodes. That way they're all in one node. I'm gonna call it light attack. For now we're only gonna do light attacks for the enemy, but we're gonna add uh, heavy attacks later. I don't mind at all. Even if it takes some effort, but for the initial prototype, we're not gonna do that. Okay, back to the combat graph. 
Now what you want to do is you want to uh, click on the plus here and type in execute to oh one minute yeah and make sure that the uh, type over here is execute execution pin instead of boolean and what we're gonna do here is we want to call this node every time the event rest, you know the task is um, made so to do that we're just gonna go back to our blueprint interface character actions and I'm gonna add a new function called enemy attack and I'm just not gonna add anything here maybe we can add a category so that it doesn't get uh, confused with the player uh, functions so I'm just gonna call the category enemy combat and I'm also gonna select oh okay I'm gonna create a, another um, category for the player actions uh, maybe I should call them player actions or movement yeah movement movement actions that sounds good movement actions by the way I'm very sorry about my the noise of my keyboard and my mouse uh, my new desk is a bit weird whenever I type something um, the it, it starts making noise I'm gonna try to come up with a solution for that, but it ain't stopping me from making uh, new tutorials every day. <laughs> so I'm gonna compile, and over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna right click and call the event that we made, which is event enemy attack, and hook it up to the execute to. That way when the execute to happens when when the event is called all of this happens which is the light attacks we're also gonna add a sword for the enemy later in another part but uh, yeah we'll, we're gonna work on that luxury stuff all after we have a playable prototype and a playable level you know just the basic bare bones stuff so yeah, compile and go back to your um, task and over here what you want to do is you want to simply type in enemy attack and that what that's going to do is it's going to call the event that we've just created and connect the target to the control spawn and the to the finish execute everything and tick the success and compile so um, when we add it over here attack player what you're gonna notice is um, when you play it actually works let him see us but he's gonna start attacking while walking and that ain't realistic unless you know there are many other enemies in his way so what we're gonna do to fix that is that we need to tell it if the player is in a range and is in a specified range which is gonna be a variable so yeah let's start doing that so first we want to go back to our behavior tree as always and what we want to do is we want to create another service which is like these two you know you you um, it's like a task but you put it on these so basically um, we're gonna put it here you'll get it as we go sorry if you don't understand it you'll get it as we go so yeah we're gonna create a new service and I'm gonna call it player in range so what we want to do now in our new service we're actually gonna create two new variables which are the attack range which is gonna be a float so this is basically the range of the that the enemy needs to be uh, you know how close the enemy needs to be to the player so that they can attack them 
so we're gonna make it a float and we're gonna make it editable so that we can edit it from the um, behavior tree outside and the other uh, variable that we're gonna do is gonna be called blackboard key player in range and this one's gonna be also editable and it's gonna be the blackboard key a blackboard key selector uh, now again we've done a lot of blackboard key selectors but basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna tell the um the this one this variable in, in our blackboard to be true or false based on the number based on this uh, variable so yeah we're gonna do that right now so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with an activation AI event receive activation AI and what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the player character get player character so that we can get the um, distance from the player character so from the player character just drag out and get distance to so yeah this is the big deal this is the node that gets the distance between the player and the enemy and fr from it we want to type in the variable a float that is larger than or equal to, uh, smaller than or equal to and just drag and drop our attack range in here and we're also gonna make our attack range maybe something like uh, 250 we want it to be pretty close because uh, the enemy isn't holding a sword yet and from this one simply just set blackboard value as boolean and connect this one to this one and the blackboard key will be the BB key player in range so um, yeah basically we get the distance based on uh, between the player and the enemy and uh, if it's in the range of 250 we make this one true which is connect which will which we will connect to the uh, player in range boolean in the blackboard so we're gonna go back wait wait let's compile and save we're gonna go back to our behavior tree and we're gonna add a service over here actually no we're gonna add a um, yeah a service which is the one we've just made and inside of the service you want to change <coughs> the blackboard key player in range to the um to be the player in range which is this one so that way we've just connected them now if you test it out it's actually not gonna work as you can see let's try it out so he'll attack as soon as he sees us as you can see and to fix that uh, we're also gonna need to do something called a parallel from here simply drag out and type in a parallel simple parallel simply just replace this with this and this with this so that they're done you know in order uh, I'm not sure how to explain it properly but you want to change the finish mode to delayed and over here the blackboard key is yeah it's it's still the same we're simply gonna right click on the attack player and add a decorator which is gonna be a blackboard based condition so just click on the blackboard one and um, basically what this does is um, we forgot to ask <coughs> you know you know we're only gonna uh, attack the player if uh, they're in range we forgot to add that on the onto the attack player uh, task so this is the way we, we, we do it so change the blackboard key to player in range and save and I think it's gonna work right now
So as you can see, right now he's chasing us. He doesn't attack us at all. And when we stop and give him the chance, he starts attacking. But you know, of course, it's not perfect yet because um, we didn't add lock on yet. Uh, I think we're gonna start working on lock on after we add the uh, player and enemy health. As you can see, it's it's awful right now. It's an awful game, <laughs> but yeah, we're proud of it. Uh, so yeah, the next episode we're gonna stop working on the enemy AI and we're gonna add player health and maybe some HUD on it. Uh, so yeah, I really hope you guys are looking forward to that. Please make sure to leave a like if you've enjoyed this tutorial and uh, check out my previous videos and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you're new to my channel. Again, I want to special thank my patrons who are supporting me and my games and my game development journey and my, you know, tutorials. Uh, thank you very much, guys. It, it really means the world to me and I'm really glad that my tutorials are very very useful for you so yeah guys see you on the next video